the liver is the second largest organ after the skin in the human body and is the largest gland weighing around 1.5 kg the liver is triangular in shape with its base to the right and it is apex towards the left the liver occupies the right hypochondrium part of the left epigastric region and part of the left hypochondrium the liver is covered by the diaphragm and the diaphragm in turn is covered by the ribs and the coastal arches so these are the coastal arches the liver is below the diaphragm as i said that it is covered by the diaphragm and liver is attached or anchored to this diaphragm by ligaments of the liver and the common ligaments of the liver are right coronary ligament left coronary ligament that continue as right and left triangular ligaments and it is also supported and attached by the falciparum ligament to the posterior wall of the anterior abdomen and this diaphragm also separates the liver from the lungs and the heart the liver is pinkish brown in color it is highly vascular and friable and is soft in consistency the liver is is covered by the ribs and the length of the liver or the liver spine in mid clavicular line is 8 to 12 cm and the length of the liver the just below the zygoid process is between 4 to 8 cm in mid sternal line and the transverse diameter the transverse diameter of the liver is around 23 cm and the thickness of liver or anterior posterior diameter of liver is around 12 cm as i said normally in an adult the liver is not palpable but sometimes may be palpable only 2 to 3 cm below the zygoid process as the rest is covered by the coastal arch liver can actually move in a range of 2 to 3 cm downwards when the person is standing or inhaling and can move also upwards when he or she is lying down or exhaling the liver is covered by the connective tissue which is called as gilson's capsule and this is quite adherent to the liver and this gilson's capsule also ensheets the hepatic vessels uh, bile ducts as well as the portal vessels and this gilson's capsule which is closely adherent to the to the liver also sends trabeculi within the 
liver or inside the liver and these trabeculi form the septa of liver lobules as the liver lobules are building blocks of the liver so you can see here this is the this is the Gil, Gil, gillison's capsule small and thin sheet of connective tissue and over which the peritoneum also gets connected or over which the peritoneum can form the folds and they can form as ligaments over the over the superior surface interior surface and posterior surface of the liver now let us come to the surfaces of liver the liver has five surfaces as is shown here let me show it on myself how the surfaces of the liver are being described now there are five surfaces of liver this is the interior surface of the liver and this interior surface of the liver the interior surface of the liver is covered by diaphragm if I move like this then what the surface you are seeing here this is the right lateral surface and the this border you can see from here from the apex at the left hypochondric region the this border this is called the inferior border of the of the liver and this border is very sharp and this border separates the interior surface from the visceral surface now as I said that this is the interior surface of the liver and this is the lateral right lateral surface of the liver there is one more surface of the liver here which is called superior surface all the three surfaces are continuous there is no demarcation and this continuous surface which you see here constitutes the diaphragmatic surface because as I said it is covered by the diaphragm and it consists of the interior surface right lateral surface and the superior surface now if you see here the this one is the inferior surface so as I said that this border this inferior border separates the interior surface from the, from the inferior surface which is also called as visceral surface now the other surface is called as posterior surface now if you look here this part this part is the posterior surface of the liver this part and if I go a little bit like this and this is the inferior surface of the liver so this is the inferior surface of the liver and this is the posterior surface of the liver now if I put like this if I place it like this then this is the superior surface this is the interior surface this is the right lateral surface this is the inferior surface what you see here and as I said that this is the posterior surface this is the diaphragmatic surface diaphragmatic surface of the liver and this diaphragmatic surface of the liver is separated from the inferior surface by the inferior border this is the inferior border and this is the inferior surface the inferior surface is also called as visceral sur surface because this inferior surface is directed to viscera of the abdomen so if it is like this so here will be the stomach the stomach is coming here so here will be the stomach here will be the duodenum this is the gallbladder 
then here will be the right flexure of right flexure of transverse colon then right kidney and right suprarenal gland so this will be the relationship of inferior surface uh, with the viscera now if i tilt it like this and show you the visceral surface then this visceral surface you can see there are two vertical fissures so this is the one vertical fissure and then there is a one imaginary vertical fissure like this and this part horizontal uh, is the porta hepatis so it follows here h capital h shaped structure so this vertical fissure which you see here this is the fissure for legmentum teres so you can see here this is the legmentum teres and uh, on the on the left side of the caudate lobe there is this fissure is here this fissure lodges the uh, legmentum venosum so this is the legmentum venosum which you see here the other structure the 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 other structures in the inferior surface are this is the caudate lobe this is the quadrate lobe this is inferior vena cava and this is gall bladder so anatomically anatomically the inferior surface is divided uh, divided here along the legmentum teres and legmentum venosum which uh, divides the liver into left lobe and right lobe so that the caudate lobe and caudate lobe is included uh, in the right lobe but this is a anatomical division the physiologically or functionally the liver is divided by an imaginary line like this so this imaginary line crosses from the gall bladder and the inferior vena cava so this so physiologically the liver will be divided here so this portion will form the right lobe and this whole portion will form as the left lobe so functionally the caudate lobe and caudate lobe will be included in the left left lobe the impressions on the inferior surface are starting from the left lobe is the gastric impression and this this caudate lobe has got a impression for the pylorus or the duodenum and this is the gall bladder and this is the impression for right hepatic flexure of the transverse colon this impression is for the right uh, kidney and this impression is for the right suprarenal gland so that was about the inferior surface of the liver this is the falciparum ligament the falciparum ligament divides the liver into two lobes the left lobe and the right lobe then falciparum ligament is continuous with the another two ligaments one is left coronary ligament and right coronary ligament the right coronary ligament has got two rims the left coronary ligament also has got two rims so this is the anterior rim of anterior rim of right coronary ligament and this is the anterior rim of left coronary ligament and if you just see here this is the right lateral surface and this is the posterior surface this is the posterior surface of the liver now as i said that this is the right this is the right coronary ligament this is the left coronary ligament 
and this is the anterior rim of right coronary ligament and this is the posterior rim of right coronary ligament and this is the posterior rim of left coronary ligament and this is the anterior rim of left coronary ligament if you see between the anterior rim of right coronary ligament and posterior coronary and the posterior rim of coronary ligament this there is a space there is a area this area which is on the posterior surface and this area is called bare area the two rims of right coronary ligament that is the anterior cor anterior rim of cor right coronary ligament and posterior rim of coronary ligament they continue as left they continue as right triangular ligament so this is the right triangular ligament similarly the posterior rim of right coronary ligament and anterior rim of right coronary ligament uh, left coronary ligament continue as left triangular ligament so these are the ligaments of the liver by which liver remains anchored and attached with the diaphragm and the posterior surface of anterior abdominal wall so that was all about the ligaments of the liver now let me put a final word here about the ductus venosus the ligamentum venosus is the remnant of ductus venosus which in the fetal life connects the umbilical vein with the inferior vena cava the liver has dual blood supply from the portal vein and hepatic artery the portal vein receives the blood of spleen pancreas and intestines and it supplies 75% of the blood to the liver it is rich in nutrients but poor in oxygen the hepatic artery is a branch of celiac trunk of aorta supplies 25% of the blood to the liver it is oxygen rich and nutrient poor the blood supply from the hepatic artery and portal vein is drained into central veins the liver has got exocrine function which is carried out by the bile and bile goes to the intestines for the digestion of the fat and other parts of the food the liver is made up of liver lobules so this is a liver lobule which is hexagonal in shape and at the corners of this liver lobule there are three vessels the branch from the hepatic artery and branch of portal vein and bile ductule so this forms the triad which is called as portal triad so portal triad is made up of portal vein hepatic artery and bile ductule and this is a misnomer because the branch from vagus nerve and lymphatic ductule is also present at this area previously it used to be called as triad but now that concept is obsolete now they say more than three vessels are there at this corner the liver lobule is around 
टू एम एम इन लेंथ एंड वन एम एम इन डायमीटर सो यू कैन सी हियर इन द सेंटर रन द सेंट्रल वेन एंड एट द कॉर्नर्स देर इज पोर्टल वेन हेपेटिक आर्टरी एंड बायल डक्ट विच फॉर्म्स द ट्रेड ऑफ द हेपेटिक लॉब्यूल इफ ए कट सेक्शन इज मेड देन वी कैन सी दैट इट इज इन द शेप ऑफ हेक्सागनल having the central vein in the center and portal triad at the periphery this model is called classic lobule model there is another model which is called as liver sns model this is the hexagonal model which is a classic lobule model and in which the portal triads are at the periphery and there is a central vein in the center and 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 in here this area so this area is formed by the hepatocytes so this is these are the hepatocytes which are arranged like the spokes of a wheel which run radially from the central vein to the periphery so these hepatic cells these are the hepatocytes which are which are laid down in the form of sheets or in the form of strips which are radially arranged like the spokes of a wheel which run from the central vein to the periphery and the blood flows from the portal triad to the central vein in case of classic model of liver lobule and the bile from the central vein to the portal triad this is the classic model of the liver lobule and this is the liver sns model of the liver lobule which consists of two liver lobules and if you draw the line from the portal triad and central vein like this it forms the diamond shaped outline so this is the portal triad this is the short axis these are the central veins and this is the long axis and if you connect it it forms the diamond shaped structure and in which the blood flows from the portal triad to the central vein and bile flows from the central vein to the portal triad so this is the liver sns model of the liver lobule and this model also shows that there are three zones in the liver sns model and the center part is the zone 1 and the area near the central vein is the zone 3 the zone 2 is intermediate intermediate in position the zone 1 uh, contains the contains the large amount of blood which is rich in oxygen and nutrients well as when the blood flows from the zone 1 to zone 3 the nutrients and oxygen are depleted or consumed by the cells here so that the blood that reaches in the zone 3 is less in oxygen so in case of the disorders where the blood flow is low to the liver uh, in cases of the shock or in cases of cardiac failure or in some other cases then this area will become uh, affected this area can become degenerated or necrosed 
in case of less blood supply to the liver while as in case of the infections so in case of infections it is the zone one which will get affected because uh, the inflammatory cells the bacteria or viruses will reach more in the zone one and then little more little, little less in the zone two but very less in zone three so in case of infection is it is the zone one or the maximum zone two that will get affected in case of infection is because inflammatory cells and bacteria and viruses reach in these areas uh, this is the this is the importance of liver SNS model model of the liver lobule so you can see zone 1 with high oxygen and more blood and this is the zone 2 or intermediate zone and zone 3 will have very least oxygen and less blood so zone 1 gets affected in infections and zone 3 gets affected in the in the in cases where there is a less blood supply to the liver so this is classic lobule or classic model of liver lobule in which the blood flows from the portal triad into the central vein and this is the liver SNS mo model in which the blood flows from the portal triad to central ve veins now let me again come to the blood supply of the liver which is by the hepatic artery and the portal vein and let me discuss about the branches of portal vein and the hepatic artery the portal vein in the liver divides into small small branches called portal venules and this portal venule then further divides into sinusoids and the blood thus flows from the portal vein through the sinusoids and from the sinusoids the blood goes to central vein and if you see here this is the portal venule or the branch of the portal vein which has divided into smaller branches called sinusoids so these are the sinusoids on either side of the cellular plates these are the cellular plates that run radially like the spokes of a wheel and on either side of the these hepatocytes or cellular plates there are sinusoids and blood from the hepatic branch of hepatic artery that is hepatic arteriole because hepatic artery also divides into small small branches called hepatic arterioles and then the blood flows from the hepatic arterioles it also flows into the sinusoids so both the arterial blood and the venous blood mixes in the sinusoids and then the blood passes through these sinusoids into central vein and from the central vein the blood is collected by the hepatic veins and hepatic veins then drain into inferior vena cava and these cellular plates so you can see here these hepatocytes are cellular plates they pour the uh, they pour the bile uh, into the bile canaliculi and from and the and the bile flows from the center towards the portal area uh, in opposite direction to the blood flow 
so that was about how the portal vein divides into smaller branches the sinusoids and how the arterial blood also mixes in the sinusoids and the blood then flows to the central vein now the question comes how the liver is formed what is the building blocks of the liver now if you cut the liver and you will see the appearance of liver like this and it appears that this cut section of the liver is made up of liver lobules but we cannot see it through naked eye but when we see under the microscope we exactly find that cut section of the liver is made up of liver lobules or the building blocks of the liver are liver lobules so this is the cut section of the liver you can see here and these are the vessels so you can see here the cut section of the liver and cut you see here the small small vessels are also seen and these small vessels they are the branches of hepatic artery and branches of portal vein and what you see here the surface is like this it appears that these surfaces are hexagonal so you can see here it appears that there is like this hexagonal shape and this liver is actually made up of liver lobules which i said is hexagonal in shape which we usually don't see on the on the gross section or we don't see by naked eye but they can exactly be seen under the microscope and we will find that these liver lobules which are the building blocks of the liver are hexagonal in shape that means having the six surfaces so you can see here this is the cut section of the liver and if we look this uh, cut section of the liver under the under the microscope then we find that this uh, this uh, cut surface of the liver across the liver lobules the liver lobules are also cut so they appear as hexagonal with six surfaces having the central vein in the center and it is also having the portal triad consisting of hepatic arteriole uh, portal venule and the bile ductule at the corners of these hexagonal surfaces and what you see here this whitish is the connective tissue or it, it is the alveolar septa which is which which comes uh, from the from the gilson's capsule the gilson's capsule enters into the cells and forms the septa of the lobules so we have understood that when we cut liver the liver we, 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 the liver is made up of liver lobules which can be seen under the microscope and these liver lobules are hexagonal in shape and the liver lobules are separated from each other by this connective tissue or so these liver lobules which are hexagonal in shape they are the building blocks of the liver these lobules make the liver or these lobules form the liver and these lobules are actually they are thick and they are around 2 mm in in the length and around 1 mm in diameter 
and these hexagonal lobules in the center of these hexagonal lobules is the central vein and the the three vessels the the por the portal venule and hepatic venule and bile ductule are at the corners of these hexagonal surfaces so here you can see the liver lobules the liver lobules the building blocks of the liver you can see their size the size is around 2 mm and the diameter is around 1 mm and again at the corners of these hexagonal surfaces of the liver lobule are the portal triads consisting of portal venule, hepatic venule and bile ductule and as already said that the liver is made up of liver lobules but the question here is how are the cells of liver arranged in these lobules the cells of the liver are called hepatocytes and we have to know the arrangement of hepatocytes in the liver lobule the cells are arranged like the spokes of a wheel in the hepatic lobules so these, this is the hepatic lobule here and these are the hepatic lobules so the cells are arranged radially like the spokes of a wheel in the hepatic lobule and these cells are placed like the sheets or like the cellular plates and they resemble like the spokes of the wheel and these cellular plates are two row cells so you can see here this is the this is the liver lobule structure which was already shown to you and this is the hexagonal lobule one of the hexagonal lobules and this liver lobule has got cellular plates or hepatocytes in the form of two rows that resemble like the sheets arranged like the spokes of the wheel and these plates these cellular plates are in two rows so this is the one row this is the another row of cellular plates and between these cells or between these cells there is bile canaliculi and when the hepatocytes secrete the bile the bile is poured in the bile canaliculi and from the bile canaliculi they are poured into the bile ductule we also see here that on either side of these cellular plates on either side of the hepatocytes there is sinusoids so this side there is a sinusoid and this side of cellular plate there is a sinusoid that means on either side of these cellular sheets or cellular plates or on either side of these hepatocytes is the sinusoids so let me show it here if we magnify this cellular plate if we magnify it we see here the two rows of cells laid like the strip are laid like the plates these cellular plates are these hepatocytes in between uh, them is so in between these cells is bile canaliculi this is not bile ductule but this this here is bile canaliculi the bile is poured 
by the hepatocytes in the bile canaliculi and then bile canaliculi is connected to the bile ductule. And we also see here that on either side of these cellular plates there is sinusoids. So it can be shown here also this is the this is the cellular plate or these are the hepatocytes. So here these are the hepatocytes and this is the sinusoids. So here the red color is the sinusoids on either side of the hepatocytes. So when shown here, so these are the hepatocytes and on either side of it or on the side of it there is sinusoid. So this is the sinusoidal vessel. But between the sinusoids and the hepatocytes there is a space. So this is the space and this space is called space of dis. Space of dc or space of dis. And we also know that the, there is the endothelial lining, the endothelial lining on the sinusoids or these sinusoids are lined by the endothelial cells and this endothelial line, lines they are fenestrated. The endothelial line, lines are fenestrated. So they got small small holes and through these holes the uh, through these holes the there is the 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 there is some plasma which uh, mixes with in the space of this and from the space of this the materials are taken by the hepatocytes or some materials are not taken and they remain in the hepat space of this and then from from the space of this they can go to the lymphaticus. So exchange of exchange between the exchange of materials between the hepatocytes and the sinusitis occurs uh, by the medium of space of this. And this space of this contains the satellite cells which are star shaped cells called satellite cells and endothelial lining of the sinusitis also contains the kufr cells which are macrophages which engulf the organisms like bacteria viruses and these satellite cells they are also called as liver lipocytes they store the fat and they also store vitamin A you can see on microscopy the liver having the hexagonal lobules these are the liver lobules which are hexagonal in shape and in the center is the central vein and at the corners of these hexagonal uh, lobules are the portal triads so this can be shown here the hexagonal structure of the lobule and at the corners of this hexagonal lobule is the portal triad consisting of portal vein, bile ductule and branch of hepatic artery. So on this side you can see here the hexagonal lobule, hexagonal lobule and this lobule is flooded with hepatocytes or this lobule uh, is made up of hepatic cells which are called as hepatocytes. The hepatocytes are in the form of strips or in the form of plates and these hepatocytes are in or in double rows so it contain this is the one row of the hepatocytes this is the another row of the hepatocytes they pass from the central vein to the periphery like the spokes of a wheel 
on either side of these strips of these hepatocyte strips is the sinusoids as i said that this sinusoidal lining have got the kuffer cells and these kuffer cells are hepatic macrophages derived from blood monocytes they lie within the sinusoidal lumen attached to the endothelial surface they have a bean shaped nucleus and plump cytoplasm with star shaped extensions so you can see here this is a star shaped extensions they are more numerous near the portal tracts so more numerous here near the portal tracts these cells respond actively to many types of injury by proliferation and enlargement the space of this is between the between the hepatocytes so these are the hepatocytes and between the hepatocytes and the sinusoidal lining cells and this is a zone of intercellular exchange that contains the plasma scanty connective tissue and uh, perisinusoidal cells such as hepatic satellite satellite cells so space of this contains the satellite cells which are important cells and these hepatic satellite cells which are also called as ito cells or interstitial fat storing cells or hepatic lipocytes and there are also other cells which are called as pit cells the satellite cells or the i2 cells they are irregular and lie within the hepatic uh, plates between the bases of hepatocytes they are difficult to differentiate from sinusoidal lining cells they are modified resting fibroblasts that can store fat and vitamin a so these satellite cells can convert into fibro fibroblasts and these satellite cells also store fat as well as vitamin a and under certain conditions they change into fibroblasts for example in cases of the chronic liver diseases they because they are converted to fibroblasts and they then lay uh, they then deposit uh, fibers in the liver so that the liver becomes fibrosed scarred and shrunk these satellite cells also produce hepatocyte growth factor and collagen they play a significant role in hepatic fibrogenesis the other cells which i said are the pit cells the recent evidence indicates that pit cells are not endocrine cells but correspond to the large granular lymphocytes and have natural killer cell activity let me talk about the functions of liver the liver is involved in the metabolism of carbohydrates fats and proteins now coming to carbohydrate metabolism liver converts glucose into glycogen and stores this glycogen in liver during fasting releases glucose by breaking down this glycogen a process called glycogenolysis contributed by both glucagon and catecholamines
liver can also form glucose from lactate and pyruvate as well as from fats liver not only can form glucose from fats but even from glucogenic amino acids like alanine and glutamine a process called gluconeogenesis contributed by glucocorticoids and especially happens in fasting times liver thus stores glucose as glycogen and is major player in maintaining stable glucose concentration by process of glycogenesis glycogenolysis and gluconeogenesis thus involved in synthesis storage and release of glucose normally about 75 grams of glycogen is found in the liver and depleted by 24 to 48 hours of starvation normally also 10 to 15 grams of albumin are produced daily now coming to fat metabolism liver is involved in synthesis of cholesterol lipoproteins especially very low density lipoproteins phospholipids and other lipoproteins like hdl idl and ldl however other lipoproteins like my chylo like chylomicrons is formed in intest intestinal cells lipoproteins are like trucks that load fats that load triglycerides phospholipids and cholesterol and carry them to different tissues the main truck is very low density lipoprotein that leaves from the liver very low density lipoproteins circulate to the periphery where lipoprotein lipase hydrolyzes the triglycerides that it carries to free fatty acids allowing free fatty acids and glycerol to be taken up by the peripheral tissues due to unloading of triglycerides and glycerol from the very low density lipoproteins the low the very low density lipoprotein is become intermediate density lipoproteins and low density lipoproteins so what i mean to say is that very low density lipoproteins that are formed in the liver carry the fats in the form of triglycerides and glycerol and is being taken to the different tissues of the body where the free fatty acids is taken up by the cells and the very low density lipoprotein is because of this unloading becomes intermediate density lipoproteins and low density lipoproteins both intermediate density lipoproteins and low density lipoproteins mainly contain cholesterol idl and ldl return back to liver where they are taken up by liver and reused liver also gathers free fatty acids from diet and breaks them down to acetyl coenzyme a to form again triglycerides in the liver phospholipids and cholesterol are also formed from acetyl coenzyme a 70% of cholesterol is produced by liver acetyl coenzyme a in the liver is also converted to acetoacetic acid which circulates to different tissues of the body as acetoacetic acid beta hydroxybutyrate and acetone 
that is ketone bodies these are converted back to acetyl coenzyme a in cells any increase in these products result in ketosis liver also synthesizes fats from carbohydrates and proteins liver uses cholesterol and phospholipids to make bile one thing you should remember here that triglycerides contain three fatty acids and one glycerol while as phospholipids contain two fatty acids and one phosphate group and glycerol now coming to protein metabolism most of the body proteins and enzymes except immunoglobulins are synthesized and secreted by liver one of the most abundant serum proteins formed in liver is albumin impaired liver function results in decreased serum albumin some of the proteins synthesized by liver include following coagulation factors factor 1 that is fibrinogen factor factor 2 prothrombin and factor 5 7th 8th 9th 10th 11th and 13th most of these clotting factors are vitamin k dependent liver also synthesizes protein c protein s and antithrombin two important transaminase enzymes produced in the liver are aspartate transaminase also known as serum glutamic oxaloacetic transaminase and alanine transaminase or serum glutamate pyruvate transaminase they are both produced in the liver the liver makes proteins from amino acids liver can make proteins from other sources also like glucose and fatty acids the enzyme is alanine and aspartate transaminase are used for formation of proteins a high concentration of these enzymes in the blood indicates liver damage since these enzymes are leaked in blood when liver inflammation is on amino acids that come from dietary sources enter the liver and are first broken down to keto acids keto acids can be recycled in the body for generation of energy and production of glucose or fat or other amino acids this breakdown of amino acids to a keto acids occurs in the liver by a process known as transamination liver converts ammonia into urea that is ammonia metabolism and excretion ammonia is formed by metabolism of proteins or amino acids liver and other tissues remove the amino amine remove the amine groups of the amino acids and convert them into ammonia so liver and other tissues remove amine groups of amino acids and convert them into ammonia so it is deamination of amino acids that result in the formation of alpha keto acids and ammonia blood ammonia level is 10 to 60 microgram per 100 ml ammonia is also produced by action of intestinal bacteria on dietary amino acids or proteins ammonia is released from monoamines that is sympathetic amines by action of monoamine oxidase enzymes as well as released during purine and pyrimidine catabolism
ammonia is toxic to central nervous system thus once formed should be immediately removed from the blood therefore liver removes it and converts it to urea which is less toxic water soluble and easily excreted in the urine mechanism of ammonia intoxication ammonia depletes alpha ketoglutaric acid from brain this leads to inhibition of krebs cycle which is the main source of energy leading to neurological manifestations the liver can form plasma proteins at a maximum rate of 15 to 50 grams per day therefore even if as much as half the plasma proteins are lost from the body they can be replaced in one or two weeks time liver liver also has got storage function so liver stores vitamins a d e k vitamin b12 iron as ferritin copper blood liver is the site for erythropoiesis during fetal life sufficient quantities of vitamin a can be stored to prevent vitamin a deficiency for as long as 10 months and sufficient vitamin d can be stored to prevent deficiency for 3 to 4 months and enough vitamin b12 can be stored for to last for at least 1 year or maybe several years the hepatic cells contain large amounts of protein called apoferritin which is capable of combining with iron to form ferritin and is stored in this form in the hepatic cells until needed elsewhere when the iron in the circulating body fluids reaches a low level the ferritin releases the iron does the apoferritin and ferritin system of the liver acts as a blood iron buffer as well as iron storage medium detoxification liver serves as a gatekeeper every substance absorbed in the intestinal tract passes first through liver where these substances are being filtered cleaned purified and then sent to different tissues detoxification of drugs poisons and metabolic products like ammonia alcohol and of hormones like cortisol hydro aldosterone insulin glucagon and testosterone happen by binding these materials so as to inactivate them and chemically modify them for excretion through urine and feces liver secretes bile and the components of bile are bile salts and bile acids bile is made up of bile salts bile pigments and other substances dissolved in alkaline electrolyte solution bile acids are produced by hepatocytes from cholesterol they are cholic acid and chino deoxycholic acid bile acids are then conjugated with taurine and glycine along with the sodium or potassium to be converted to bile salts like sodium taurocolate or glycocolate or potassium taurocolate and potassium glycocolate the two most important bile pigments are bilirubin and biliverdin formed by decomposition of porphyrin ring that contain four pyrrole rings 
Bluribene is brownish yellow pigment that gives feces its characteristic color and is the end product of breakdown of heme from destroyed red blood. While as biloverdin is green, when bilirubin and biloverdin bilo get conjugated, we call them as pigments. Bilirubin is transported to liver along with plasma proteins called as unconjugated bilirubin. Protein gets separated and bilirubin gets conjugated with glucuronic acid so they become conjugated. In intestine bacteria act and 50% of it is converted to bilinogen. Most of bilinogen enters liver through anterior hepatic circulation and is re-excreted through bile. About 5% of urobilinogen is excreted by kidney through urine. Some unabsorbed part is excreted through feces as stercobilinogen. This gives yellow color to urine and feces. Other components of bile are water, bilirubin, cholesterol, fatty acids, lecithin, sodium, potassium. Functions of bile salts are emulsification, micelle formation and digestion of fats. Luxative action, bacteriostatic action, absorption of fat soluble vitamins, major route for loss of cholesterol from body, lubricate, lubricating function and anterior hepatic circulation. Liver also produces red blood cells in the first trimester of the fetus. Phospholipids which are mainly lecithin phospholipids and bicarbonate and other ions. Liver also produces insulin like growth factor. So insulin produces red blood cells, phospholipids containing lecithin and bicarbonate and it also produces insulin like growth factor. Liver also produces little erythropoietin. Liver protects from harmful effects of bacteria and other organisms a function performed by kufr cells that ingest bacteria or other foreign materials from the blood. There is a substance which is called as choline and choline is protective for liver. It is a constituent of lecithin, a key building block of cell membranes, important for cell formation and tissue growth and repair. Choline is similar to B vitamins and is necessary for proper liver function, metabolism of fats and proteins and for normal functioning of the nerves. Choline is extremely important in brain and memory function and is helpful in treating Alzheimer's disease. Choline prevents gallstone formation, high blood pressure, atherosclerosis, kidney damage, nephrites, glaucoma and myasthenia gravis. It is also used in treatment of bipolar depression. Choline food sources are banana, cauliflower, flax seed, leafy green vegetables, legumes, nuts, oranges, peanuts, potatoes, seeds, tomatoes, vegetable oils and whole grain. Now coming to Coinard's classification of liver anatomy. This is important as far as 
surgical surgery of the liver is concerned. So in Coignard's classification of liver anatomy, the liver is divided into eight functionally independent segments and each segment has its own vascular inflow, outflow and biliary drainage. Now if you see here, these are the eight segments, the liver is divided into eight segments and each segment is functionally independent having its own vascular inflow that is from the portal vein and branches of the hepatic artery and outflow is from the hepatic vein so this is the outflow outflow these are the hepatic veins and also the biliary drainage is there in each segment. Now as I said that the liver is divided into eight segments and these segments are lateral superior segment, lateral inferior segment. So this is the left lobe. The left lobe is divided into lateral superior and lateral inferior and is divided into medial superior and inferior so this is the segment 4 which is divided into 4a and 4b that means medial superior and medial inferior then we got anterior superior and anterior inferior that is segment 8 and segment 5 and then we got a segment 6 and 7 as posterior superior and posterior inferior so if I count this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and the first segment is the caudate lobe now you can see here how the liver is divided into the segments. This is the inferior vena cava, this is the middle hepatic vein and this is the left hepatic vein, this is the right hepatic vein <clears throat> and horizontally it is divided by the portal vein into superior compartment and inferior compartment. So it is the hepatic vein is which divide the liver into eight segments. This is the left hepatic vein, this is the right hepatic vein and this is the middle hepatic vein. And these veins they drain into inferior vena cava. So the outflow drainage from the liver is through these hepatic veins that drain into the inferior vena cava. And inflow is through the portal veins which divides into left and right branches which run horizontally in the liver in the center and divided into upper compartment and lower compartment. So I can show it again. So the middle hepatic vein divides first liver into right and left lobes and this plane, this plane uh, runs from the inferior vena cava to the gallbladder fossa. So this middle hepatic vein, the plane of it runs from the, from the inferior vena cava to the gallbladder. So this is inferior vena cava, this is the gallbladder fossa. So it runs in this plane, dividing the liver into left lobe and the right lobe. And then the right uh, middle hepatic vein divides this right lobe into, into the three compartments. This is the compartment four, 
which is subdivided into 4a 4b and this is second and this is third and then the right hepatic vein divides the right lobe into the anterior compartment this is anterior compartment this is posterior compartment the left vein the left hepatic vein is here which is along the falciparum ligament and the portal vein as I said the portal vein which runs horizontally right and left branch divides into upper and lower segments let me show it again So you can see how the orientation of different segments are in the liver. The eight independent segments, each of which has its own vascular inflow, outflow and biliary drainage. Because of this division into self-contained units, each segment can be resected without damaging the other segment. So the importance of these segments is that any of these segments can be resected without damaging the other segments. So you can see the orientation of orientation of the segments in the liver. For liver to remain viable, resection must proceed along the vessels that define the peripheries of these segments. In general, this means resection lines, resection lines parallel the hepatic veins while preserving the portal vein, bile duct and hepatic arteries that provide vascular inflow and biliary drain drainage through the center of the segments. Coenards divided the liver into functional left and right liver as I said by a main by the main middle hepatic artery which is a branch of inferior vena cava and this middle hepatic vein which runs along the plane of inferior vena cava and gallbladder fossa is called Cantley's line. The Cantley's line runs from the middle of the gallbladder fossa anteriorly to the inferior vena cava posteriorly. 